It takes a piece of wood one inch per year to dry, or at least that's what you've been told. Today, we're gonna get to the bottom of the age old question, how long does it take to dry wood in order to be able to do something productive with it? Welcome to Mac Jackal. The real goal of drying wood is to get it to a point where you can do something productive with it, like carpentry, construction, some other crafty DIY thing that I can't even think of. And to do that, it's gotta get down to a point where it's no longer gaining or losing moisture within its environment and that's called equilibrium moisture content, which is EMC. All that means is that it's at equilibrium with its environment. It's a little more confusing than that though. First of all, you have to understand that wood is kind of like a sponge. When it gets wet, it expands. When it dries out, it shrinks. This sponge here, which has been sitting in our camper trailer, is at EMC. That means it's no longer gaining or losing moisture. It's matched its environment, so now it's at equilibrium with this space. Let's say that our theoretical home is at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 40% relative humidity. That would mean to reach equilibrium moisture content, our wood would have to be at 8% moisture content. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That's what I thought. Well, that's because 40% and 8% are measuring two completely different things. The 8% is the moisture content of the wood, while the 40% is the relative humidity, which is the humidity or the moisture of the air. Let me explain. Moisture content, the 8% that we're looking at, is actually measuring the amount of water as weight in the wood compared to the wood weight itself without the water. So that means that it can actually be over 100% because you could have more water weight in a chunk of wood than the wood would be completely dry. Relative humidity, on the other hand, is actually a ratio of how much moisture the air can actually hold versus how much moisture is in the air. 100% relative humidity, it's fully saturated. It cannot take any more moisture in, and generally, it'll be raining at that point. So when the news lady says, it's gonna be hot and sticky, 95% humidity, she's talking about relative humidity. In order to figure out where our equilibrium moisture content needs to be, we need the help of a chart. So like I said before, if you've got 70 degrees Fahrenheit at 40% relative humidity, our EMC would need to be about 8%. So if we put a piece of wood in there that's at 12%, it's gonna continue to shrink until it eventually reaches EMC at 8%. This is where it gets really important to know how dry the wood needs to be to be able to use it. On average, for indoor use, we want the EMC to be between six and 9%, and for construction purposes, it needs to be below 19%. This is gonna vary depending on where you live in the world or in this country in America. If you live in Arizona, it's gonna be a much lower EMC that you're shooting for compared to some place like Florida. Let's say I build a giant table and I ship it to Arizona. When it was here and I was building it, I had the wood down to 9% moisture content. Well, when I ship that thing to Arizona, it's gonna to continue to drop maybe down to 5% and it's gonna shrink and that's gonna cause problems. Now let's say instead I take that same table that which was at 9% and I ship it to the Caribbean and it's gonna be super humid and it's gonna be in an open air area. That thing's gonna actually gain moisture and expand, also causing problems. This is why it's actually really important to know the EMC, which is telling us how long it's actually gonna to take to dry the piece of wood to get to what we need. This stack of wood is sitting outside air drying and I'm only gonna be able to get it down to 15, maybe 12% before it reaches EMC. And that's because it's outside and the environment dictates how low the EMC will be. That means if I wanna get this wood down to 8%, I'm either gonna to have to take it and have it kiln dried, or I'm gonna to have to place it into a climate controlled building like a wood shop and let it sit there until it acclimatizes itself and reaches equilibrium at hopefully around 8%. To answer the question, how long is it gonna take the wood to dry to be able to use it, it depends on five variables. One is the species of wood itself. Oklahoma State published an article, Practicalities in Air Dry Lumber, where they looked at how long it takes to dry different species of wood. According to this article, white oak can take 80 to 250 days to become fully dry, where a sugar pine can be dry in as few as 15 days. You can check the moisture content of your wood with a cheap little meter like this. This is a moisture meter. They make really nice ones for people who are doing this a lot, but this one's cheap and we're just gonna turn it on. This cherry has been drying for about three months. Let's see where it's at. 10.8, 10.9. So this wood is dry. So I'm gonna take this into the shop and I'll sticker it and stack it and let it dry further down to 8% and then I can build things with it. 
I'll put a link in the description and you can get a meter like this yourself. The next variable that determines how fast wood dry is temperature. The hotter it is, the faster it will dry. When in conjunction with relative humidity, the lower the relative humidity, the faster the wood will dry. So hot and low humidity. The next variable we have is airflow. This is why we've stickered our pile so air can flow all the way through this stack, drying all surfaces of the wood. And we've got a nice westerly wind south and north in this way. All the air is funneled to this stack and airflow allows the moisture that's leaving to be blown away and continue to pull moisture out. That's how evaporation works. And then the last variable is the thickness of the wood. As you can imagine, these one inch slabs are gonna dry much faster than that five inch slab. All the surfaces are drying in. That five inch slab, the outside might dry pretty quickly, but the inside is gonna take a lot longer to dry. It's important to know that in the winter time, like here in the Midwest, when it's below freezing, the water in the wood is frozen solid. And so almost no drying happens during those months. This is why in this part of the country, fall is our best season because we have warm days like today where it's about 60 degrees and windy and very dry versus early spring where it's wet and cold or winter where the wood's frozen. Hardly any drying's happening during that time. You can dry wood too fast or too slow. If you dry it too fast, you introduce checking and cracking. On the other hand, if you dry it too slow, it can introduce staining and fungus, which can also deteriorate and rot the wood. Next time you look at a freshly milled piece of wood and you wonder, how long is it gonna take to dry this so I can actually use it? Ask yourself, what species of wood is it? What's the environment? Relative humidity, temperature. What EMC are you actually trying to get it down to? And how much airflow are you getting to this thing? Do yourself a favor, get a moisture meter like I have right here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.